Okay, we're going to call the <coughs> August Airport Commission meeting to order. Uh, roll call. Neil Johnson. Here. Greg Collier. Here. Cameron McCarran. Here. Joel Gardner. Steve Smith. Here. Bill Schoonover. Here. Micah Thomason. Here. Okay. Approval of minutes from the last meeting. Move to approve. I'll second it. Motion second. We approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Comments from audience. Okay. Yeah, button. There's a button to the right. Should look like a little person. Okay, still can't hear. Mine's off. I'm off. There you go. There you go. Okay. Um, my name's Nathan Bates. Um, I own a business at Springdale Airport. I um, learned to fly here. And we're up on the front near Powell Street. We're a flight school, and we do training. We specialize in accelerated training. And one of our concerns is we have inadequate hangar space at the airport. Um, right now, most of the students that I train are not just, you know, people who are training to fly, but they're also airplane owners. And they're either own an airplane or they're looking to buy an airplane. And between me and my students that I'm training, we have between eight and ten airplanes that we have parked outside on the ramp. And we're looking for hangars. We're looking for somewhere to put them, but we don't have a location. Every spot is full. I have three students right now that have all approached me saying, I'd like to buy an airplane. This is the airplane I want to buy, but it's irresponsible for me to buy this airplane and leave it outside for the amount of hell we get and the elements. So, um, you know, my request would be if there's a way to come up with some solution. Um, part of the problem is our aircraft are being devalued on a regular basis because one of my aircraft um, that belongs to one of my students just had hail damage that the hail storm came through several months ago and it, you know, caused $13,000 in damage to the aircraft um, when the hail storm came through. And that's one of the examples of aircraft right now that, you know, it's not just a Springdale airport. There's not any hangar space in any airport within the region between Salem Springs, Rogers, Fayetteville, even as far as Huntsville and Berryville. But um, that's just kind of my concern. It's my first time to share at a meeting like this. But um, I'd just like to, you know, say I'm a someone who flies every day. I'm at the airport, and I get to work with most of the individuals in the area in that pilot community at Springdale. And it's something that all of us are facing as owners, um, as aircraft owners, and people who want to be prospective owners. Thank you. Uh, just for your information, of course, we can't, we won't be discussing that in the regular meeting today, but that that's one of our concerns right now. And we're trying to get more space out there. We're working on it uh, as we speak. We've got some hangars being built now. We, we're looking for monies to build other hangars. And we have lots available should someone want to buy our lease ground space and build a hangar. We have that option, so you might want to check it on that. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your time. Okay. Anybody else? Um, Daniel? Update from Summit? Good to see everybody again. So looking at the numbers, you've probably all got them in front of you. Um, you'll remember at the beginning of the summer, I guess this, whenever uh, July came around, I gave you June's numbers, and June's numbers were, uh, were great. They were really good numbers. I think that was the beginning of the summer season, and people were ready to go, and they did. Um, having said that, we were down significantly, almost 20% for July over June. And, uh, and I think I just attribute that to... Um, People had been flying a whole lot in June, and they started getting the bills in. They kind of reined it in uh, for July, and um, and June was kind of 
well above what we normally see. Having said that, so uh, July was very much on average a little bit, a um, little bit below what we normally see, what we saw last year for the June July sales of last year, forty five thousand one twenty five gallons versus last year's forty five thousand six ninety nine. So uh, very much on par and 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 comfortable. Uh, in the Avgas, uh, we were down um, just a just about two percent. So that's almost negligible at that point, and uh, down about 500 gallons, 450 gallons over last year. Again, that's that's a great amount of Avgas to be moving in a month. Um, Cameron's been super busy trying to get maintenance done and all that uh, on his aircraft. Um, seeing a whole lot of foot traffic through the FBO throughout the summer. We're getting a lot of our regulars that charter um, going through through net jets and executive on the field, um, staying real busy. And so uh, it's good to keep that uh, keep that foot traffic up. Um, I think the, the city's doing, Laura's doing a great job at keeping everything um, up to snuff on, in the terminal and, and uh, getting Alan and the guys to make sure everything's on par. So it's it, the, the people that we're seeing walking through are really appreciating it. And so are my employees as well. Um, looking at, I wanted to mention uh, executive uh, specifically because um, with all these numbers, including our, our bigger months, Executive has been flying the most out of all of our based aircraft, and they did almost 26% uh, uh, year to date of the of all of this fuel sales at the airport. So um, I say that to say, um, as a base customer, that's that's astronomical. That's that's really good, and um, and so what we're really hoping is as we get this new hangar built, we're going to start seeing more customers coming in. And I don't know if it's going to be charter, but as long as they're base customers, these base customers are building up these fuel sales are going to, they're going to really start to bolster these numbers that I'm reporting to you. So um, just something to look forward to as, as you guys move forward and getting these hangers done and uh, us getting people into those hangers. Really, really excited about that. So the customers. Um, I don't have anything specific uh, to note. It's kind of been, I was out for a week last month. So um, Unless you have any questions, I think that's all I've got. On uh, your transit aircraft, are you happy with the percentage of those people who buy fuel? Yes. So what we tend to see with transit aircraft is we'll get an average of between 100 and 400 gallons will be the average orders. And that's been consistent throughout this last month and into this month as well. Um, it's not uncommon to, to throw three, four, 500 gallons on an aircraft just for different reason, reasons. We don't often see people coming to Springdale not getting anything and then going a distance, like a long distance. We'll often see people out of Little Rock that come in, drop off, they don't grab anything because they've got base discounts at Little Rock, they're not gonna grab anything. Um, and that's understandable, I wish they did, but there's not much I can do there. Um, the transients that are coming out of, um, say, Dallas and then going up to, up to Omaha, they're gonna, they're gonna refuel will get three or 400 gallons for whatever it is. So um, I'm not seeing a lot of people skipping through without, without needing anything and services as well, GPU labs, whatever it might be. Were you able to research any of the surrounding airports to see uh, June numbers, how they compared? Like we had talked about last month with the spike that we had, if that was consistent around the area. I, I wasn't able to get any solid numbers. The few people that I talked to or more like city representatives. And um, there were some, I think I talked to one manager at some little airport, I can't remember, I apologize. Um, I said he did see a little bit more traffic, but I think that airport is, is more light aircraft. Single engine piston is really what they're getting. So they might be getting some school traffic coming through the area. Um, uh, Bentonville did see a little bit of an increase and Fayetteville was, uh, I'm not sure what they what they were doing before before they Nothing shut like down us, their runway. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had a really big. And specifically for Springdale, we had a big boost. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, I just from what I was able to gather, I don't think it was really reflected around the region. Something about Springdale for <clears throat> the month. All right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Daniel, I've got a question. Uh, I know we've got a good history relationship with Net Jets. Mm -hmm. Are there any other, you know, uh, lease operators, FlexJet, you know, whoever they might be? Any thoughts about anything that we might be able to do to attract a little bit of that business? Mm -hmm. You know, I see them coming in and out of Fayetteville, out of Rogers, or even, of course, Bentonville, and 
any thoughts along that line? So that's uh, that's an endeavor I've been kind of pursuing over the years. And what I find with um, even NetJets, FlexJets, Wheels Up, all of those companies is it's almost it is entirely relying on the needs of the customers and where they live and where they want to go. Um, so our normal traffic in and out, the people who live here who might want to go to Northwest Florida uh, to the beach or something, they're the people in Springdale will fly out of Springdale. The people in Fayetteville will fly out of Fayetteville because that's where they live and they're not out any more money, you know, going to Fayetteville than Springdale. So they're going to not drive as far. The, the bigger challenge that I work on every year is how do I, how do I get the traffic that's going into the Fayetteville games to recognize Springdale as equally equal or better of an opportunity for them from an operating standpoint um, as Fayetteville. And, and that's also a hard, hard fought battle because again, it relies on the owners of the aircraft, the, the passengers. If they want to go to a football game in Fayetteville, they're going to fly to Fayetteville. And so those are the ones, it's not even the pilots, which I've talked to before. Some pilots would rather go to us, but it's what their passengers want to do. And so we're, we're trying to think of, we have been for a long time, what's going to attract our passenger or those passengers, those owners to come through and use Springdale instead. We do have some advantages that I like to I like to give to them, and that instead of going south into the Fayetteville Airport and walking 200 <laughs> yards to your airplane, you can go 10 minutes further of a drive, uh, get directly on your aircraft. You're not going to wait at all, and we we've got all the amenities that that Fayetteville offers as well. Um, they're not going to hit that traffic going north like they would going south. Not as bad. So, I'm going to do some reconnaissance this season, lurk around the Fayetteville Airport for a little while. We have plenty of rental cars for games and... Yeah, so the uh, rental cars um, really don't have much of an issue. We have a really good relationship with Hertz and Enterprise. We also utilize one of our courtesy cars uh, whenever it's appropriate for different people. And then uh, our relationship with those uh, rental car agencies allows us to usually, well in advance, get everything set up. And the game days, they're, they're super busy. All of their locations throughout Northwest Arkansas are always busy. And so they, they will bring cars in from out of state and different locations, pull them from XNA even, to make sure that usually the, the Southern Three, uh, Bentonville, uh, Springdale, and, and, and Fayetteville airports have plenty of cars for their customers. Um, so during the games, I've never really had an issue for, with supply. It's just communication, make sure everything's put in place. Mm -hmm. uh, with the thought of game day, we're going to take a look again this year at uh, some sort of you know, incentive or mm -hmm. you know, activity that way. Yeah, so I, I always offer uh, you know, free services, GPUs and labs and things like that. That kind of helps out more of the operations side of it. The pilots are attracted to that, and that can be a convincing factor for the for the owners and operators. Um, and then uh, incentives probably, I, what I'd like to do is for all of the home games, really kind of do a, maybe a, a spread downstairs so that whenever people walk through, they've kind of, the passengers, whenever they land, they want to go to the football game. So they're not going to be around for very long. So I do some like grab and go foods, hot dogs or hamburgers, something like that. They grab it, get in the car and go. That could be attractive. That way they always remember that Springdale's going to feed them whenever they land and they don't have to buy a $7 hamburger whenever they get there. So just little things like that that we're brainstorming to kind of make it more of an event at the airport. If that answers your question. I haven't been to the Fayetteville Airport on game day, but I'm assuming there's Razorback stuff everywhere. Maybe that's an option, too, to put some Razorback garb up on the walls. That's what I was thinking as well. We're going to start dressing all the employees in, in Razorback shirts and things like that. And, um, and even whenever, if we can, whenever we have um, home games, get, get some of the get some of the other teams stuff as well. So if we start getting those passengers coming through our terminal, they're not just seeing Razorback in their face and and then they get all riled up and don't come back. They'll see some of their team's things and they're like, all right, well, bring Dell, they can go both sides, that's all right. And uh, all sorts of different ideas, but I, I really wanna get more Razorback logos into the terminal and make it feel more like Springdale's also rooting for them. All right. Anybody else? Thanks. Thank, Thank you very much. You. Ernest, do you have a report for us, please? <laughs> yes, thank you. I'll keep that in mind. I have a poster, actually, you could put up, but I don't know how appropriate it would be for Texas. <laughs> <laughs> 
So at the last uh, airport commission meeting on July 21st, uh, there was a discussion about the restaurant that Mr. Matlock was three months behind on his rent, that he was not complying with the operating standards uh, contained in the lease for the restaurant. And I was instructed to notify him that he needed to bring his rent current, pay the rent for August, and come into compliance with, their oper with the operating standards for the restaurant or we would terminate the lease effective the end of September. He received that letter and on the following Monday, he did pay the past due rent, $1,200, actually $1,320 uh, with penalties. Yeah, $40. And then she took the penalties off. Yeah, he paid $1,200 on the 25th, but he has not as of, unless Laura gives me an update, uh, as of 10, 10 o'clock this morning, he had not paid for August. So he is now behind for August plus a penalty. So he's into us for $484 as we stand here today. It's also my understanding that he's uh, from Laura that he still is not complying with the uh, operating standards of the restaurant as far as the hours he's supposed to be open. I think there's some on site rules that have been violated as well. Uh, including but not limited to smoking in the restaurant. So uh, I don't think that he's here today. I halfway expected him here today to at least give us his side of the story, but I have not heard anything from him. I do know that he attempted to make a his payment for August earlier this week, but the city clerk's credit card machine was down. He came back the next day and the card was declined. Said he was going to the bank that's not an excuse because you can go to the bank and get cash and come back. But, I mean, city clerk is, what, two blocks from the bank. But at any rate, as of this morning, they've not heard anything from him. And unless Laura's got something to add, something to add I'm uh, willing to do your bidding. Aside from the money, the report on the operations there is concerning to me. There would, I think that you all have been given a copy of the health code violations that were re recently found on the premises as well. And one of the conditions of the lease is that he is to comply with all laws and ordinances and regulations pertaining to the operation of a restaurant. Will they come back and do another inspection later? I'm not sure how they, he said that how they do that. After 30 days, they would come back and make sure that he's complying okay. with any violations. Once you've been uh, compliant, they'll continue to follow up until you are compliant. Okay. Because so, my question for you is, do we still want to terminate the lease at the end of September? I, I'd like for Laura to make a couple of additional comments. She's kind of been monitoring the situation, and I think she has some information here that we need to hear as far as his hours and, you know, when he's there, when he's not there, et cetera. I think that'll help us make a decision. Yes, you got something to add, Laura. <laughs> I didn't really want to, but well, <laughs> no, I've been keeping give track. Give it to of me. Him. I'll I'll read it. <laughs> <laughs> but I kept track of his hours since the last meeting because I had a feeling, you know, that that would be an issue. Really, honestly, only a few times he was open at seven o'clock. The lights were on at seven o'clock. I can't even say he was actually open. Um, most of the time, it was seven fifteen. A lot of days were after eight o'clock. Friday, last Friday was 1025 when he got there and opened. Then Saturday, two Saturdays, he was closed during this time. And a lot of people from from what the FBO, what the front desk says, a lot of people came through wanting to go up there to eat. So that's embarrassing to us. I think it looks embarrassing to us as a city and the FBO. You tell, you know, people call in and, yeah, it's going to be open, and then he's closed. People have directly have called very, him and asked. We don't seem to have very good luck with restaurants. We don't. Well, he I started out on a really high note, and I'm not we sure. We've got a bad enough reputation about us. Yeah. I think where we are, though, is we've already contacted him and gave him the, the ultimatum, if you will, of where we are, and Correct. he hasn't met it. So we have, we're to the point where Correct. we determine the contract. It's certainly not doing us any good at this point. That. That's my understanding, unless you were directing me otherwise. That was going to be my path I was going to follow. 
I'd say proceed. I think we could wait six months and we're still going to proceed. You know, we've got to do it thing. now and end this and get started with another opportunity for someone else that yeah. didn't work. Agreed. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ernest. <clears throat> Operations report, Laura. Um, the thing I wanted to talk about, which I, I sent this to Beth, but I must have sent it too late and she didn't get it to print off copies, but the man came to look at our roofing for the estimates that we've got from the insurance company, and he submitted me two different proposals. Um, one is for putting a silicone spray over all of the roofs that were damaged on the hangers, and that's a 10-year warranty. They sprayed on. It's like a silicone coating and he says that it's a very good product and he sent the specs and everything for that and then his other and that one comes in right at our budget for what the what our um, insurance money was for and then the other one is to replace it metal as what the insurance company what their recommendation was you know what they put on there and that was almost double so how many hangers are affected we had we had hangar 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 11, 12, and then our shop building. Was that hail or tornado? The, the hangars were all hail, and our shop was the tornado. So when you say double, what does that equate to the, in dollars? The insurance money that, that we've got that they've sent us is $488,918, and his bid for the silicone coating is 487407 so he's like... So, and then the metal is the metal is nine hundred sixty four thousand. And then he said, with the silicone coating, he said that they're pretty much that's available, and he can get started, you know, fairly quickly. And the metal, he's not sure on the timeline on that. What Do that you would know? Be. Did were the roofs depreciated? Why why are we so far off? Yeah, they depreciated our roofs when they paid us out. Have have we got any ill effects from the damages there? Are we leaking or? We've had this is just unsightly. Just, these ones have always had leaks on them, so I think I'm not sure if it was from this past storm, if some of that damage, or if there was previous stuff that didn't get Would, reported can, the last times. Or can what. we identify the leaking areas? And, and we try. I mean, we try all the time. And that don't work. <laughs> we try to. I mean, all you can do is try to silicone up around the screw heads, and they just back up out of it. But he said with this product, they won't back up anymore you know when it heats and expands and contracts the screws just back themselves out and that causes leaks so that the sealant he's putting on there is it a thin layer is it a thin? yeah it's a it's thin he says 1.3 gallons per 10 by 10 area so it's probably fairly thick but hmm. do you have any references for this coating for someone that that's used could testify this? to how well it performs no, I haven't really had time to look into it yet. He just sent it to me at like 11.30 today. So that's why I forwarded it to Beth, and I guess she just didn't get it in time. So that's my, my fault. I should have made copies. But, but anyway, well, she can she can send that email out then. Right. I think really it's going to come down to do we want to patch it for the short term or do we want to do it right and spend the money regardless? Because if, dep if they depreciated the roofs, we're not going to get the money to replace them. We're going to have to offset it somehow. And if we do that, we probably got 50 years on them. Does the epoxy have any sort of warranty or do they year. stand behind how many? A 10 year warranty. 10 year renewable, so they could come back and check every roof and then probably you probably pay. I don't know what the what the renew, renewal charge would be, but I imagine you could pay to have them fix or check everything to make sure that it's still good. I'd like to see someone check with someone who have had experience with this product before you go spend four hundred thousand dollars on. Could could you ask him if he's got a a local or a, a reasonable reference that that we could? Yeah. You know, I'm assuming out. they're talking about just replacing with new roofing on all the hangers, but new skins, right? It would just, well, he'd go through and, and fix anything that's like noticeable. No, I'm like talking about it, about replacing the roof, the 900000 
No, that yeah. was, that's for removing all the metal, putting all new metal back on. Yeah. Starting over now, basically. And metal's what, 20, I think metal's a 20 year. 20 year? I think so, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Metal roofs, I think. I, uh, and what's your thoughts on this? If we uh, can afford to fix it, I'd fix it right. Pardon me? I, I would fix it right if we can afford to fix it. If we can figure out how to make that work, I'd fix it right rather than doing a temporary fix. Even if we get a good report on it, if it's warranted for 10 years and we get 15 out of it, 15 years from now we're spending that money again or we're spending to do it all right again, doing, doing a million dollars or a million two or whatever steel will be at that price. I feel like it's we got to take care of our airport, and I, I think that doing it the right way, replacing those roofs, is the answer. If we can figure out how to get the money for it, I think that's what we should do. How old are the roofs that are there now? Any idea? As old as the buildings, I think. Most of those were built in the last probably thirty to twenty-five years ago. Yeah, yeah, older than that, like seven, I bet maybe even older than that. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, a lot of those hangers been out there since what, Neil? The I know the mid seventies. At least. At least. So I started flying out of here in the in the late seventies, and you know, hangar five, six, all of those were 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 there. And that had kind been of reaffirms for, my thought that you're the you know, the amount of time that we got on those roof materials to repeat that again, and know that we have potentially another fifty years to spend on those roofs before we have to do anything with it versus 10 years maybe we get 15 maybe maybe some of them work great but you know 12 15 years from now we have a few that we have to repair again and we're back spending a couple hundred thousand dollars i'd rather make this something we don't have to think about the next several commissions don't have to think about it's just done and right i know we had a horrible hail storm in the late 70s because i lost an airplane to it and I don't have any idea what all might have happened with regard to our hangar roofs at that point in time. But that, to my recollection, is the absolutely the worst hailstorm that we've had since 1978. I think most of us had damage that, during that time. I'm, mm -hmm. I remember well. Uh, my, I'm kind of confused on where we were at with these hangars prior to the hail. We were having leaks then, right? Before. Has it gotten any worse? Uh, I don't think so. That's my question. Is I how know, much, like Hangar 11, we get reports from much him all the time. It's just chronic. We have to do nothing but repair the leaks. I'm, that's the question I've got. I mean, we'll just, we just keep going back and try to <laughs> screw the screws back in and silicone them up. And how often do we do that? Oh, every six months on some, on, you know, on various hangers. Is so it? the hail that we got didn't cause more damage for leaking? No. Not, Not that, I mean, I don't, I don't think so, but I don't know for sure. Of course, we haven't had a whole lot of, well, I guess we had some rain, so I don't know the answer to that. It's not necessarily a new problem. Right. Right. The problem, I guess the only problem would be if we get a bigger storm come through and we don't do something with the money, then we won't, right, we won't be warrantied again by the insurance company. Right. But I don't think it'll be warrantied if we put that coating on it. Either. It'll be warrantied if we replace the metal. Yeah. Now you're saying if we don't use we filed a claim, right? And if we don't use the money, I mean, if we don't take the money from the insurance company, you're saying that still would toll a damage down the road. No, we need to take the money from the insurance company. They've already paid us. It's already been paid. Oh, yeah. We've already paid paid all the checks. Oh, okay. It's how not much on how we want. How much were, were we given? Four eighty-eight. Four. Yeah, four eighty-eight. How much is the damages? <coughs> the damages. Well, we don't know. To, to do the sealant is about that price, 480 something. Yeah, to, to do the, the silicone sealant is 487 and the insurance paid for 88. 
So we can use this as an opportunity to let the insurance company hopefully help us with the leaks that have been happening. But we're not going to have any warranty on our roofing from this point on. Correct. Well, warranty, but not insurance coverage. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah, that's a bit of a wrinkle. Mm -hmm. yeah. We've got to come up with another four hundred eighty bucks, or four hundred eighty thousand yeah. bucks is what it is. It's like mm -hmm. putting new roofs on at half price. Mm -hmm. And we'll have a warranty. We'll have yeah. insurance coverage. And then the yeah. insurance coverage, if you get next. Or what about what about on. this? Are some worse than others? Could we replace half of them? Hangar eleven is really bad. Hangar 4 has got some units that are really bad compared to others. And I don't know, Cameron, you don't have any on 5? Is most of the standard on the north, north side? Oh, sorry? The hangers on the north side are the ones that's damaged the most? Mm-hmm. 7 and 8, he said, were, were about the worst, although the dollar-wise, they're not necessarily the most dollars, but I don't know. Mm. Hangar 11 and 12 have the most dollars, but they could just be the largest. I'm not sure that's how. Kind of like Greg's the facing the runway. Yeah, on that back row. Right. I like Greg's thought. If we have some that are worse than others, maybe we put new steel on those. Maybe the price will come down enough that we can repair the ones that have leaks and, and take care of that and know that those are still going to be covered under a hailstorm in the future. But I, I, can you can you piece this? Can, can they can they remove? Four pieces off of one and, and replace those four pieces and um, yeah. not to be yeah. not for insurance to insurance yeah. nightmare there. Can is that money elective we can spend it on all or part? Or do we or are they saying if with that money we have to address all of them? So you could go ahead and spend it as far as it goes and then have down the road we need additional money we're going to be just, back the same we would just have, have to, to know, get it somewhere yes but we would just have to know if we replace five of them that those five are going to be covered with insurance right. if there's damage again the other six or whatever it may be would not be well that would buy us some time because we're going to have to come up with money some way anyway mm -hmm. whether we repair the rest of them or wait if we hit the worst ones Right. Sounds like with the depreciation, we don't really have great insurance coverage anyways. Exactly. So I don't know that we're losing anything. If we cover half of them, we covered half of them, we'd have insurance on half again, like we do now. We're not losing anything. We spend the money and make some tenants happy not having leaks. Well, we need to check, too, if there's any grants available for replacing roofs on older hangar. Yeah, any idea? Yeah, I just checked the, uh, the AIP handbook for, like, the FAA grants. It doesn't look like... But the, the, state, the state wouldn't either? I think the state would. Um, no. I've never seen them with, with similar projects like that. Um, you have already used, with the, with the Powell hangar, we've already used our 80-20 grant for this year, so that only leaves the, the 90-10 grant, so that's a max of 150000 So I think that's the, the most that the state would be able to get. That starts over in June? Yes. And, and what is the 80-20 money? How much is it? The 80-20 um, is capped at 400000 Get close on that, and this isn't an urgent thing, I don't think. We can also thing. do it year after year after year. Yep. So you put what about the, uh, so we have insurance from the state, the money that they for the tornado? I wonder if we could dip into that for the. I know we couldn't for the hangers, but for the one, uh, what did you call it? The our shop building. The shop building. Maybe we could use it for that. Uh, I wish Colby was here today. Yeah. That'd be a good person to contact. Why don't we do that? Contact Colby and see if he thinks there's any funds available out there for some of that. What if a tornado comes in and wipes them out? As long as you've got coverage for that. Did they, how did the insurance react on the fence that was torn down? No money. We had to pay for that? We did not have insurance on a separate policy for the fence. So. How much did that cost? Um, we were around... Just over thirteen thousand. So, for parts. Why, why are we having insurance anyway then? They're not with the call your agency. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> <laughs> because if if they're not going to pay us anything, why why spend the money to have insurance? 
It's more of catastrophe insurance. Well, that's all we need is, yeah, not roof damage. Mm -hmm. So the tornado wipes them out, we're covered, but short of, and we're covered for half, probably. Short of that, we don't have much. I think that's citywide. Ernest might be able to speak on that. Do you know? We have a, we had a lot of uh, hail damage. Because if our buildings are so old, they're not going to insure them anyway on the roof damage. If we don't repair them, we might as well not have insurance on them. Well, I mean, you have two options. Well, we have more, but you have replacement costs and, and you have actual cash value. We obviously have an actual cash value policy through the airport, and I think through the entire city. So it's not going to pay you replacement cost on something. It's going to pay you depreciation off of that. And it's a lot less expensive. I think we have enough questions out there that I'd like to see the email that they sent. And as Neil spoke to, I'd like to see if we can find a reference from somebody that's used that product and how well that worked. And then we can kind of think through this. I would table this decision until at least next month and give us a little time to think on it. And maybe could you even ask him to inspect those roofs and see which ones he thinks are the worst and give us a breakdown of how far our money could go to replace and repair. Well, he came out last week, so he probably has some of those answers. I bet he does. We can see if Colby can attend that meeting, too. Yeah, and in the meantime, we need to talk to Colby about what state help we might get. So for the insurance money, I mean, we were given a lot of so much per building. You're saying you can, you think you'd be able to combine that and just I, do some of the buildings, would, or, or is yeah, it each allotted... I'd be 99% certain you could, but we probably ought to make a call to confirm that. I don't think they care. They're paying for it, and they're not going to pay for it again unless we replace it. Right. That's what I'm... I mean, basically, it's our money. We have to verify that those things are done for next year. So we'll just get that back on the agenda for next month, specifically for the, the uh, hangar roofs. And in the meantime... I, I don't. I'll talk to Colby, and you, or you'll see him too, James, and uh, they may be able to help us somewhat. We may need them for help if we end up following Greg's plan, and we're able to use eighty twenty state money next year. We're going to need a twenty. Yeah, and even maybe the next year and down the road. That's what I'm saying. Rather than go out there and try to get a half million dollars to to do them all right now. Yep. Piece me it out, because that, that was my question, how much more, <coughs> how many more leaks do we have, or what's the damage being done? Uh, I know if you got insulation in those buildings, it will damage the insulation, but how many of them are insulated? I know, well, 11 is. Corporates are. Huh? The corporates are. Right, the corporates are, so those need to be covered now. Priority, yeah. And, uh, well, the corporate ones didn't have Nine, nine and ten A and B didn't have any, like he said, barely any damage. They had he put five hundred, eight hundred dollars on those, and that was he was oh. just trying to find things. I think. Okay. Anybody else? James on the activity report. Um, as Daniel said, it was a little slower, but uh, other than that, everything else is going great. Um, I got Steve here again today for some clarifications on our land lease requirements, what we have for minimum standards. And uh, I brought that in where it showed on December 21st, 2006, we all approved a 30 year land lease, which is now 39 year, with a minimum of 3,000 square foot hangar with no less than a 40 foot wide door. So that was what y'all approved back in 06 or the commission did. And now it's a 39 year lease with seven cents a square foot. So that's all the specs we have on Land hangers. Hangers. Yes. So anyone that comes and wants to build a hangar 
on any of our lots would need to meet at least that would be the minimum standard that they would have to right and then depending on what size hanger they want to build y'all determine if, if it fits that spot or not there was a question about bathrooms and things of this nature and those right hangers and that's not a requirement in there mm -hmm. that's all held to large scale and planning right so any more comments on that? Do we need to change that, I guess, would be the question. So should we develop something kind of along the lines of a, like a master plan for where we want hangers to go? Like, like a planning commission does where you have, and you're asking for zoning requirements changes if it meets the planning commission's future hopes for that area, then it's kind of a no-brainer. We could do that with some planning of what we want size-wise for hangers. So if someone wants a smaller hanger, there may be areas that we would be more appropriate to put smaller hangers, areas to put larger hangers, where we kind of reserve those areas so that everyone's wanting the same piece of dirt, we're getting the type of hanger we want on that dirt as it's approached. And it'd make it easier for people to approach us and say, I'd like to build this size hanger. They we could give them kind of our plan for where we'd like to see that size hanger placed. <clears throat> Might help us a little bit with our development of whether we develop off of Powell Street and help, help fast we move to that project to get more street, more, more um, accessibility to the apron as well as to Powell Street off of those. Do you think we should look at something like that? Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense to me. Otherwise, it will look piecemealed over the next 25 years. Yeah. I think having a strategic plan is ideal just so you have, you know, there's only so much land there, right? So utilization of that property and a plan to go execute against, I think, is uh, extremely ideal. Garber has drawn up future hangar sites and has several that they've shown uh, both Wyman and I on different layouts on different areas that fit. But I, but I think what I would ask is that if, if you can put that into something that we could look at for the next meeting, I think we could probably look at that. And if we approve that, that would give guidance to people looking for hangers, space, or, or land leases. And it would give us a little bit of guidance where it's, we're not quite reinventing the wheel every single time this comes before us. If we could kind of approve that. I don't know that it has to be a formal, stead, fast thing, but it, it could definitely be our, our goals and work from there. And then we would be at, people would be asking for an exemption from our plan rather than where whatever it might come from. Green. And we could do different door sizes or whatever. Like I'm sure Garver knows what the common sizes are and could do that as well. If there's people that don't want a 40 foot door, but like a hanger, it's more like a smaller plane hanger, put two planes in or something instead of the big ones that we, we have in our heads that we have probably the most call for. We can spend on 172, it's almost that. So, you know, 40 is not. It's not that big. It's no, not overkill, many yeah. stretch. And, uh, so. Hey, um, I have been looking at. I've been looking at, at that spot that's opposed, just opposed to that incomplete hangar over there. And I'd wanted to build something smaller than 60 by 120, but I bumped into Greg out in the hall a minute ago, and he said they were doing the engineering for that hangar that's incomplete to finish that hangar. If he could include my large-scale engineering into his large-scale submission to, to the planning people, then I don't have to spend a whole bunch of money on engineering. I can build an exact mirror image of that 60 by 120, and then Nathan was in here begging for hangar space. You know, he's right across the ramp from me, and I'll have lots of hangar space that I can rent him. I can do it that way. I think they're independent of one another. The one they're doing over there is doing for the city or for their. Oh, city. sure. Oh, you mean I, yeah. I would have to? Well, they can. What I did is I went to the planning commission to uh, Patsy to see if I could get a copy of the original approved for construction large scale that was done several years ago by that other fella just to use as a template so I'd know what I'm dealing with because to build a mirror image of that hangar that you guys are gonna build, I need to know a lot of specs like how tall are the walls and 
things like that. And I can do that, and I don't mind doing that. But I need, I'm just trying to get clarification. I did get clarification, I guess, from somebody that I don't have to put a bathroom in it, uh, which is a good thing. I would, I think, the, I think the utilities aren't even going to come in from Powell Street far enough to accommodate a bathroom in that hangar, is it? Yeah, it will. It It'll will? Yeah. Oh, it's coming down to you. Okay. Well, I would, you know, I would like to do something like, okay, I put a bathroom in there or just stub up uh, the pipes through the slab and put a bathroom later if I wanted to, or I wanted, I would like to have the option of selling half of that hangar to somebody else. So I would have to put in a three hour firewall. So I'm just, I'm kind of still trying to feel around in the dark and try to figure out exactly what I'm required to do so I'll know where I'm at. If it, if it becomes cost prohibitive, you know, then I can run backwards on you guys. But otherwise, it, it, it seems like I'm, it, I should be able to get it put together. It depends on whether or not the city comes back and says, well, you've got to pay for the detention pond or something like that, you know. Well, and I know, I want you know, I've never got anything like that before. <laughs> That's mostly hypothetical until you, until you go and start the process. Right. Then we wouldn't have any way of knowing we don't make that type of decision. Right. Here. Well, the only decision that you guys would have to make on the front end is that business of what are the minimum requirements? What size hangar would I be required to build? We just have it right there. Minimum 3,000 square foot. Okay, so... Is is the city, or are you guys going to let me build something within those minimums on that plot? That's our specs, and I think you're asking. We're, this is not on the agenda, and I did ask you to come by and talk in the, briefly in the uh, comments from the audience, and we would have to have something in in front of us that was detailed or. Mm -hmm approved or that will be subject to approval to the planning commission and everything like that. But as far as our specs and James brought that, we have very minimum specs and in 06 is when we did it and it's minimum. It's mm -hmm. the minimum specs. Right. And you well, could, 3000 feet too small you, anyway. Well, you can propose anything you want, right? That's what I'm getting. All right. But are you guys going to stay with me back up? Let me back up. Okay. Is for is the engineering that we're doing on mm -hmm. what we're going to have over there. That's not transmittable to somebody else to in lieu of their product is what I'm saying. You'd need to right. do that yourself. Oh, I'm Same just talking about thing. hiring them to because they've already done that. It'd be yeah. simple for them to do mine. Well, hire them to do that, and they'll already have yeah. that information. You know, and it'd probably be I don't know. I can't speak for the engineers, but yeah. you know, you'll well, need an engineer. Yeah. Well, all I, all I need to know really is all of that infrastructure development over there is going to be paid by a grant. Is that right? Yes. What I've, what I've been into in the past is I, I start doing everything and then they start saying, well, you got to pay for this. Now you got to pay for this. And I end up in a whole bunch of money and because they want me to improve the infrastructure for the city. I'm not talking about Springdale. I'm talking about Bentonville did it to me. But I just I need to know what my minimum requirement would be for a hangar size on that spot and what my requirement for any additional infrastructure would be. And that and that's all I need to know. I can I can get an engineering company to, to draw my large scale for me. I'm just trying to get clarification on what you want me to put right there. So you know your total costs. Pardon me? So you know your total cost. Right. I'm just trying to, yeah, I'm trying to get a number on yeah. to work off of and go, okay, I can do that or no, I can't. Yeah. I'll, I'll build it and I'll do it or no, I won't. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So all I need to know is what's, what's the minimum size of the building going to be and is there anything else in terms of infrastructure that I'm going to be required to pay for? And I think the only guidance we can give you at this point is that that is the minimum, what, what James read for us. Mm -hmm. It needs to be at least that size or larger. And until we have a formal submission of this is what you want to do, we are not able to say yes or no on it. that right? That's right. Yeah, that's what so, I was trying to okay. say. And I think and that's, that's where that's, I was talking yeah. about the planning 
is that if we did that, that would be a really mm -hmm. good indication to you whether we're liking that right. idea of that type of hanger size in there. Right. So that, that planning may end up having like different, that's all we have currently, mm -hmm. but there may be different specs for anything within 400 yards of Powell Street, we're going to do this as a minimum size, but if it's further out towards, it needs to be this mm -hmm. size. We may have some different numbers in the future, but we don't have that right now. So right. always, we've always just looked at it as you send a proposal to us. We look at it, we either approve it or don't approve it, and then you know to go. I know you don't want to put money in front of this before, but that's that's always the way we've done it. Having right. a plan might help you. Yeah. I mean, that would be a better direction than just kind of flying blind in this, but we don't want to landlock ourselves either with you putting something in and us losing space for another hanger and right. additional space on that hanger. Right. Oh, I can do the whole 60 by 120. Well, but I need you, to know. When you start I mean, your process, those answers will, will be provided to you because you'll have to have that for the design and mm -hmm. everything else. But right now, what I'm trying to say today with this body, we're we're in the dark as much as you are. Okay. On well, where we were last month, when that's where we ended, I think, as you said, uh -huh. you would. Yeah, I had a meeting with I had a meeting with Patsy at the planning department. And she was saying something about setting up a meeting with you to get everybody on the same page. And when I went in there, they were talking about something on the east side of the field. So we kind of really nobody. Well, that's where we started, wasn't it? It was on the east side. That, they thought I was still on the east yeah, side so. of the field. Yeah. Once you get started specifically on what you want and see if it will fit or if we can make it fit on that other side, that would be okay. all I could advise you or any of us for that matter. Okay. I'll just get with the planning people and find out what they're going to require me to do in terms of infrastructure. And it, I know you talked to Greg, but you might talk to Greg or Adam as far as utilities and all that, I know they're going to be right there. It should be easy enough to hook up to, it, even if it meant stubbing up yeah. and leaving it. Um, no, I'd probably go ahead and hook up to it if I don't have to pay to bring it in from Powell Street. We are working on that as well, already going to do right that. now. So that's what I'm saying. You, When you start your process, mm -hmm. those answers, those questions will be answered. Right. Specifically, We, I'm reluctant to say right now what I think we have out there because I could be wrong, but you'll get specific answers. But I'd start with the engineers and then then go to the planning commission because there's where they'll get the answers if there's right. a question. And it could be debated or it could be challenged mm -hmm. or different ways you can handle right. that. What about parking for those hangers? If you guys finish out that 60 by 120, and I build a 60 by 120 right next to it. Where do people park? Watch people what? Park. Parking. Uh, that's in, answered in your engineering. Uh, there is some parking. Uh, I don't, I, that's never been a question to me for hangers yeah. is where you park. I know when I was at planes out there, I just put my Car and a car hanger for the bear. I got a comment from somebody. But you don't. That, you're that talking it, about if you have a party out there and have 20 cars. No, right, no. You just talk about one or oh, two. Oh, no, cars. I don't even. I don't have any friends. No, so I don't have to worry about yeah, that. I'm just talking about one or two cars. That's right. not an issue. Well, the comment was made to me about, I don't remember who, that Powell Street, or where we come off of Powell Street with that little gravel road, you guys are going to pave that and then require commercial entrances off of that street. You're way ahead of me there. Yeah, I don't know where I heard that. Did, did you hear that, James? Who was it told me that? They said, said you're not going to be able to come through the gate because that's a ramp, instead a taxiway instead of a street. I said there's going to be access off of that paved drive because that's where the fence is going to come to the ends of the hangar, and then you can park at the end of your hangar. The so hangar I, so I would have to do a commercial entrance <laughs> off of No, I'm not no. in planning. It's all too it must have been somebody in planning that said that. Okay, I'll find out more about that. That answers all of my questions, I think. I'll just go ahead and, and start the process until somebody steamrolls me and I have to stop. No. Otherwise, I'll I, keep I right think, on going. I think it'll be good. Okay, I think it'll work out. Okay. All right, thanks. Well, thank you.
So Greg, you got something for us? Yeah, I'm gonna try something something new today. I brought my computer, so maybe this will help us all get on the same page a little bit easier. I might make it. Ooh. Oh man. Fancy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Fancy. Now I gotta see if my, my mouse will reach far enough to get it for this thing. Nice. All right, so there's an overview of the airport. I like it. I've got the, I've got the three projects that we have um, undergoing shown on here. Uh, north is to the right of the screen. Um, I'm going to try to move my mouse over here. So north is over here. You can see the 1-8 end. You can see the 3-6 end on the left. And then you can see the, the terminal and the terminal ramp and all of that, just to familiarize yourself. Um, this is our, this bottom right-hand corner over here is our Taxiway B extension project. Um, this project right here is our East Hangar project that we've got going on right now. And this is that Powell Hangar project up here that, uh, that we also have going on. So just to give you a little bit of reference on, on where all these things are, you know, as you're driving up 265 right now, you're able to see a lot of work going on right here uh, with this Taxiway B extension project. You're able to see some work going on right here with the, with the East Hangar project. And then eventually, maybe in a couple of months, we'll be able to see some some progress made on that on that pile hanger site um, up there. And so moving on to my to my next slide here. So let's just focus on the the taxiway B extension project first. Um, as you can see here, we're this is the the taxiway B extension. Um, the main thing that I want to focus your attention on is this box culvert that I'm kind of hovering over right here. I've got some pictures shown. Um, as you may have heard, we've been we started construction on it over the last month. We started construction on August first. Um, it's a it's a 150 day calendar time, so we'll be well into December by the time we finish with this. Um, we've got four or five different phases of construction that have different impacts to the airport and and users. Uh, for example, right now we've got taxiway B3 closed just so that the contractor can can be able to work in this area right here. Um, we've coordinated all this with with Mike Sparks and the tower, and so every, everyone's on board with with these closures and, and how we need to taxi and move aircraft around it. But some of the pictures that you can see here are of our night work. This one in the bottom left is just some of the excavation. This is me standing in the middle of the creek, uh, Spring Creek. So most of the time, this is about a foot and a half of water. What the contractor's doing here, I'll try to zoom into that a little bit so you guys can see it better. Most of the time, it's a foot and a half of water uh, behind this excavator. They actually put in a dam and they're pumping water around the entire uh, their entire construction site so to try to keep it dry right now i think it's wet because we had some rain the last couple of days but as long as it's not uh not too wet uh, they're able to keep working so this is the the first picture in the sequence the next one you can kind of see here this is the same day um, this is the existing box culvert that's out there so they had to, to cut up the walls a little bit so they can tie their rebar in and pour concrete up against this uh, this box culvert and extend it outwards like I mentioned, we've got about 150 feet of this box culvert that we're extending. Um, and then these two pictures in the top left, um, you can see this one. There are these lights over here. Uh, for this box culvert extension work, we've got to do it at night while the runway is closed. So we've, we've had a few runway closures. Um, in the total project, you, you may have heard maybe some complaints. I know, I know Laura has gotten a few phone calls just about the runway being closed, whether it's open or closed or not. But um, um, the, the contractor has allotted 15 nights of runway closures to, uh, to complete this portion of the work. Um, how we're doing it is about two nights every week. So they'll, they'll work two nights, uh, get the concrete poured, get everything set up, and then take the rest of the nights off while the concrete cures and while they get, up, get set up for the next pour. So we had, we've used about six, five or six days of our total 15 days so far. And we can expect an average of one to two nights of closures probably over the next uh, two to three weeks just until we can get the work completed here. But you can see the, the, the lights, lights shown here. They, they have to light it up at night so that they can get work done. Um, you can see all the rebar cages uh, for, the, for the full box culvert there. And then finally, this picture here, I thought this one was a funny one. Uh, it looks like it's, it's a picture that was taken place during or that was taken during the day, but this is actually at night as well. Uh, they just had so many so many lights on uh, to be able to get the work. You can see this part right here is the is the concrete pump truck, and so they're actually pumping concrete in um, into this corner. And this is when they were pouring the floor of that box culvert. So 
that's that's where the taxway B project is right now. I kind of spoke a little bit about the direction it's going. Um, like I said, uh, we, we've had about six nights of, of runway closures. Fifteen total are allowed. So we've got uh, ten or eleven more left that, that we expect them to have. Construction is going to be ongoing throughout December. Um, and this is just a, a big project, and it, we're, we're glad to get it started and for them to be able to get out there and, and keep working. Um, any questions about the Taxway B project? Okay, moving on to the next one, I'm going to talk about the East Hangar. Uh, like I mentioned, that's this, uh, this site right here at the bottom of the screen, right off of 265. Here we go. So here's kind of a zoomed-in view of that site. Um, where we're at with this project is, is last month, um, well, the last few months they have been under construction. Um, if, you, if you remember in the past, we've got two contractors working on this project. We've got um, APAC, who's doing the site work, and Olki, who is responsible for the building. Um, as of about two weeks ago, they finished, they completed the site work, or at least they completed the site work to a substantially complete uh, point. And, and what substantially complete means is, is they've pretty much gotten to where there's base course out everywhere um, where all the paved areas are. Um, we're going to hold off on them installing asphalt and markings until the building goes up just so that we don't tear it up. And so for right now, the site work is completed. Uh, I've got some pictures shown on here, just of some of the different, um, different things going on. Here's a picture of the inlet that's going to go in the middle of the apron. This inlet's going to be the only drainage infrastructure. Or we've installed all of the drainage infrastructure for this project that we'll need for the entire build-out of, um, of these four future hangars here. Um, and then here's a picture of, our, of, of some of the, the drainage infrastructure or the detention pond that, that we had set up there as well that's going to help meet some of the city's uh, stormwater requirements as we move forward. Exactly. Where is that? So this picture right here, um, this pipe that I'm kind of looking at right here, it goes underneath this taxiway. And so you, you, we kind of have two pipes meeting in a V right here. That V is, is right here at, at an existing ditch, and that water is going to go underneath the taxiway and then on down. There's a ditch that runs further north. Um, this inlet that's in the corner, this one is just in the middle of the apron, smack dab in the middle right there. And it, it, it ends up draining into our detention pond as well. So um, one other thing, um, like I mentioned, uh, APAC done with the site work. Um, Olki has been in this past week. Um, this black material that they have here is just a, a geofabric or a geotextile membrane. It's to keep the, the new rock that they're going to be putting in for their hangar foundation separated from the, the existing soils out there that are in poor shape. Um, and so when I, when I drove by today, they were actually excavating or they had brought, brought in about two feet of rock on top of this and they were excavating around that rock to get ready to pour their concrete footers for the, uh, for the hangar building. And so, um, I was talking to the project manager, and they said probably in the next two weeks we'll see concrete go in for the hangar foundation, and then probably a week or so after that they'll start they'll start going vertical as soon as we can get the the concrete to cure in time. So that's the East Hangar project. Um, are there any questions about East Hangar? Okay, um, and then the final project, um, the one that we've kind of talked about a few times here, is the Powell Hangar reconstruction project. So that's shown up here. Um, I don't have any construction photos of this one yet, um, just because we, we haven't been able to, uh, to get started with construction. But um, you can see um, we, we've got the, the gray proposed apron. This is the apron that we're going to end up constructing. We've got the, the red shown here. That's the hanger that's already, the foundation is already there that we're going to end up reconstructing. And then the green here is the detention pond that uh, will also be constructed. And just like um, we kind of talked about earlier, this detention pond is going to be designed for the full build out of, oops, having a hard time driving this thing, designed for the full build out of all these hangars. And so we should only have to do it once. We're putting all that infrastructure there so we, we won't have to worry about it for, for future development. Um, while we're talking about the Powell hangar, um, I just want to remind you about where we're at with the, with the budgets on this one. Um, if you remember from a, a, few, a few months ago, we got um, confirmation from the ADA from the state that... Um, we received a grant for $400,000. And so we broke this project up into two grants, an FAA portion and an ADA portion. And so for the ADA portion of the work, that's going to be what funds the hangar building itself. We received $400,000. The city or the, the airport commission will be on the hook for the matching, which is $100,000. And then for the FAA portion, which is the site work, the apron, the utilities, um, 
We're going to use your AIG funding, which came from the infrastructure bill last November. Um, we're going to get a 90-10 grant where the FAA is going to pay for $411,000. The ADA is going to match 10% of that grant, pay for $45,000. And that leaves the city paying a grand total of zero on that portion of the grant. So for this whole project, um, the city is expected to be on the hook for about $100,000 here. And so I just wanted to remind you of that as we kind of go into um, my next order of business, which is just, um, I brought two contracts today, uh, engineering contracts associated with both of these grants. I've got one with the FAA project and another one with the ADA project. Um, and I'd just like to get your approval to uh, approve those contracts so that we can move forward with site investigations, design, large scale development uh, for each of these, or for this project, but for both portions of the project. Can I answer any questions about um, this Powell Hanger project while I'm here? Are there any, any thoughts about the use of the land that would be between the hangar we're building and the detention pond? Is that, that just green space? What, what are we looking at there? Yes, um, it is just green space. What we're going to try to do is move this detention pond as close to this, as, as safely close to this hangar as possible, just so that we could maybe use this space over here for future development of a hangar. Uh, we want to keep that in mind. Unfortunately, um, this hangar foundation is already here, and so we're, we're already stuck with, with where this hangar has to go. We can't slide it to the right anymore. Um, and so we're going to do our best to, to, make, to make use of this dead space here so that we can uh, hopefully develop this area here uh, in the future. But that's something we're going to look at during the design. That's a great idea. Yep. And is, I mean, is it potential that maybe if we need a little parking space that some of that, that could be used? Absolutely, and that'll be on the on the back side of the hangar, um, and that could be something that we pursue a, an ADA grant in the future, or if we get low bids or something, we could maybe include it in this par project. I don't think the uh, the FAA will will pay for the FAA's portion. I don't think they'll pay for the parking lot, but um, depending on on how the bids come in, um, that is something that we could look at including. <laughs> Any other questions about this Powell project? Let me scroll down a little bit here. Okay, and, and like I said, Neil, I just would like to get approval of the of the two engineering contracts that I that I've got here today. Hey, on the Powell project, when's an estimated completion time on that? I'm just curious. Is that that's going to be into next year, right? Uh, it'll it'll be sooner than the end of uh, end of next year. Um, it depends how quickly we can get the get the steel ordered. Um, that, that's going to be the longest lead time on this project. Um, for design, we're hoping to be able to get a grant application submitted to the FAA um, by November. And so that puts us with, you know, having a contractor selected in December. From, from December, it could be, we've seen it be four months. We've seen it be eight months with how long it takes to order those steel buildings. Um, I have seen them start to trend downwards again since, you know, uh, since our East Hangar building, that one was kind of held up by the by uh, by COVID. So, I would I would expect us to uh, to get started with the hangar building itself probably early early spring, sometime around March or so. So you're you're requesting uh, approval of the engineering contracts. Yes, sir. I would make a motion that we approve those contracts. This is what we asked for. I'd make the motion that we approve that. You're a second. A second. second. Uh, roll call. Schoonover. Yes. Smith. Yes. Thomason. Yes. McGarren. Yes. Collier. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Okay. Uh, so we are approving those contracts. Anything else? Uh, I've got nothing else for you. Um, if you got any feedback for me about the, the format of this or if it went better, if it, if it went worse, I'd be happy to talk to you guys afterwards about it. So or if your, you've got any your questions. Your proposal is to build the same thing next to the apron on further west? Yes, sir. Same, same thing. Okay. Yeah, that's why I just asked him to send me a picture. Email me a copy of that. Yeah, right there. Yes, sir. Right. I'm a building manufacturer and get the specs on it. I mean, the way we work is we need that proposal, but I 
can't imagine us having a problem with building a twin building right next to it with the apron already there. Mm -hmm. But I can't, can't promise until. But yeah, if he'll email me, email me that picture, I'll get with my building manufacturer and find out how much that thing's going to cost to build. It has parking built into it, by the way. <laughs> You've got exposed steel hanger frame there. We didn't build the entire roof line, so you're going to have covered parking on that oh, end yeah. if you build a true twin. Wow. Which you, you're going to want to. Yep. So you don't have to put that firewall in. Yeah. I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, I've learned, as long as I've been on this airport commission, that we hurry, 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 and then wait. Um, the detention pond, and this is not necessarily for you, Greg, I don't know, I'm just, you know, we were rushed and rushed and rushed to make a decision on that detention pond mm -hmm. uh, that really flubbed up some of our plans. Do you know, Greg, is there any plans of that being started, the detention pond? You're talking about the one on the end of the runway? Yeah. yeah. On north. Mm -hmm. They're still waiting on one permit. Mm -hmm. So they're waiting on a core permit. So, and that's for the concrete trickle channel in the bottom. Yeah, yeah. So it's got to run its 90 day course of waiting. And that's the final permit they're waiting on. Okay. Just curious. I, every time I drive by, I cringe a little bit when right. I think about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's all I had for you guys today. Uh, if you got any questions, like I said, I'll stick around afterwards. Thank right. you. Thank you. Okay, any new old business? Uh, Dale, before we move on, um, I wanted to ask on the hangers. Um, it looks like we've got an old hanger lease. I know our goal is anyone that we can move over from old hanger to new hanger, we like to do that. And our situation is that if anyone is ever late on a payment, then we move them over to the new hanger. That's right, isn't it? So we have a old hanger lease here that's late. Is there something with that, Laura? Do we know if there's a Which one? Yeah, 509. Which one? The very top. Oh, went right there. I see it. <coughs> Don't want to miss an opportunity. The very last page, very top. Yeah, the very last page in the packet. Right, that means that he's due August and he hasn't paid August, so. So that's not late, late. Okay. I just didn't it's want to get it. Just like <laughs> It's not late, late, just late. Yeah, one, one late, not two. But so, what point do we call it late? Or late, late, whatever it is. Is it greater than 90? <coughs> so when it gets is 90, it greater than 90? Or is it greater than 60? Greater than 90 means they can get kicked out. Okay. So, our, our hope is to get everyone off the old hangar. Uh, Lease. lease and move them over to the new hanger lease. So anytime anyone's in any violation of any sort of the old one, I say once it was a late, it kicks in or triggered. Correct. Yeah. Which would be now. Today or tomorrow. I think today, I don't today. I think today yeah. maybe. <laughs> well, I, yes and no. I mean, you don't want to go do that necessarily and somebody change their checking account. Yeah, I agree. I, it might be worth a call. <laughs> well, what's going on. They, they've had problems with on the mail being messed up and people's checks getting returned because of address issues. Okay. So yeah. we'll check. I, mean, I, I think we use our use common sense with that, of course, but like, if we're late, that's the plan to move over to the new hangar list, at least which has more restrictions and more control for us and was written <clears throat> with a lot more teeth for Ernest if we need it. Get some more info on it, I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> I got something I'd like to throw out there. <laughs> you know, I was a big proponent of closing in all those t open tees that we had. And yeah. now I'm thinking, because we have so many people, would it be wise for us to consider putting some open tees out there with the potential of closing them in later just to rent? 
that's been that's been bannered about here before. Uh, open hangers were the norm for years, uh, and yes, for the starter pilots and first aircrafts and stuff like that, I could see a need for. I'm wondering about the area that we might choose to do that, mm -hmm. and we do have some. Uh, I would suggest this, and I don't know if it's, if it's the case or not, but if we do that, I would love to see that building designed where it would be easy to just add doors or something like that to yes. close them in and not have to go right. through all of this rebuild. Right. So, well, whenever Greg's designing the layout for hangers, he can show where we can put future T hangers. Mm -hmm. I think that's worth looking at for mm -hmm. sure, and especially with all the numbers we've got and with Nathan, I think his name was, that came up and talked about the new pilots. It could be a not necessarily a quick fix, but a quicker fix. Well, you'd have those planes here, and you're going to get fuel sales out of them, and get all the extras, and minimizing the cost of hangar. Right. One of the things that made those so much less expensive was we had asphalt floors on them. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's a real good idea. So, you and you eliminate the doors. So that's about the only advantage for is cost. But the doors are a pretty big cost. Yeah, yeah, they're big. Oh, yeah. Could could we do something kind of like we did with the through the fence operators when we for the the money that we like got back over the next twenty years from them, had them kind of contribute to paying it back? Could we build hangers and have people commit to long term leases? That way we have income that's gonna pay for that debt if we take on debt. I don't know how that works if we can do something like that. No, we, didn't we have something like that, Bill? Like that was mm -hmm. the deal. Like the people coming through the hangar, we had a plan, and after 20 years, we were going to be square again on it. We had them pay for it. Right, Neil? Am I wrong? I, I'm not, I think I we're talking what, about two different things. Yeah, I remember what you're talking about. But um, something like that, trying to figure out how we can get the money now to go ahead and start projects if we have such well, a list. Fortunately, state will fund a lot of those hangars, and I don't know if we've tapped that out or not. Uh, if if we have monies come available that's out there on hangers, uh, that would be the next project we would probably want to look at is some of these open tea hangers. I just get the feeling if we built 50 hangers, if most, we could snap our fingers no. and they would be there, they'd be rented in two weeks. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, they'd be it full. Be. So whatever we can do to smooth the, move that process, and maybe people would be interested in putting money down, you write a twenty thousand dollar check to the city to help us get some of the money to get going with it that's maybe matching funds so we're not always going to the city saying we need the 10 or the 20 percent match maybe we could come up with a way to i don't know i was just trying to come up with ways to get the money now so we can start now they're not going to be cheaper five years ago from now to build i don't believe they're i don't know be. if you could pre-lease or not on a deal like that i you might have people who would think they would do it but Long term, there, there's a whole lot of difference in those people who own those hangers right. on that east side that pay for access to the runway. You're right. I think that some we, of it would. That's, that's what I was that's thinking of. But I think some of it would be determined on how much we could get either state or federal, and how quick you could get that money too. Because yeah. right. you're asking somebody to rent the hangar to give you 10 percent, or so to speak, right, 10 right. or 20 percent, and then how quick could you get money from state or federal to be able to erect those structures? So there could be a waiting period in there too. And have we have used the, the max of ours? Seems like Adam said at one point, I don't want to call it COVID money, but whatever there was, there was extra money. Uh, so the, there is COVID money, and I, I know you, you guys have talked about that before. Uh, I, I don't know the status of the COVID money, but there is the infrastructure money, um, which was going to be in the realm of like 1.4 million. We're going to use 400,000 of that on this. Powell Hanger project, uh, and then we've got a million left over, a million over five years. It's, it's about $300,000 a year is what it is. So three years from now, we could have that um, for building, for building tea hangers or something, something in that realm. But that'll be a, that'll be a standard uh, FAA 9010 grant. But 
back to what you guys are talking about, about, about the uh, state grants. Um, like I said earlier, we've used, the pallet hanger is using an 80-20 grant for this year. And so we won't be able to get another $400,000 80-20 grant until next June or July. Um, but there is still a $150,000 max 90-10 grant that's available. If you get, get 180-20 and 190-10. Well, we've got to figure out how to use that. We can use it. We know we can use it, huh? Yeah. I think how, where. I think we need to look at projects that we're thinking about, projects we've already got in the works that we're, we're going to do in the next few years, and just see if we want to change that around a little bit and add some or whatever, because I, I've been hearing there is more money available for airports now than there was yeah. for a while. And I know the city has money that they don't have a spot for it on this COVID money and things of this nature, like we ran into with the, the drinking fountains yeah. and things. So, and I hear some of that's going to be released for non-COVID activity or non-COVID use. So, yeah, I think we need to make a uh, wish list. And, uh, and with that strategic, if you do that, strategic hangar development plans, I'll try to put together some prices or maybe some, oh, yeah. some, uh, some value, some place where we can get some value out of it. Obviously, some of them are going to be like, you can only put a real big hanger here, and it's going to cost a lot of money to right. get all the way up there. But I'll try to look for some, you know, minimize pavement, uh, minimize additional pavement, minimize how much you have to commit to right now. And it sounds like the, the shade T hanger idea might be, might be one that uh, fits that bill. So do we have a master plan for where we put these hangers? Or like That's what he's building. Yeah. That's what he's just saying. He's yeah. a strategic plan, mm -hmm. uh, hanger plan. And, and if there's a master plan, 2007 might have been the last time we did, uh, did one. Typically, mm -hmm. they go for about 20 years before the FAA wants you to, to do to do well, I think it'd be prudent of us to update it right now. There's just an expense because Garber does that. I, I will say, yeah, I, I will say the, to, to update your master plan is a, is a, a big ordeal. We have to get our planner, our planning team involved as well in coordination with the FAA program manager. But for updating something like a hangar strategic plan, isn't necessarily as isn't as costly, you'll just pay for what it, what it takes for me to lay it down. We've already got a good idea of what they are. I mean, I can. Now, that's strategic, yeah. strategic plan's going to show us where the low-hanging fruit is, where right. we can do some tea hangers quick. Right. Thanks, Ernest. Thanks, Ernest. Because we're 16 years into it. It feels like 20 years. Yeah. 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 So much yeah. 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 To your point, yeah. if we have anything wrong sure now, it's best utilized. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. You bet. Mr. Chairman, Neil, yes, I have a meeting at uh, two thirty, so you can be excused. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, that's all right. Yes. I do want to see this real quick. We'll try not to do much while you're gone. This is the start of the plan, and um, this was included in, in the packet that we submitted to James for our uh, engineer of record. Um, and you can see this top exhibit. Uh, it's hard for me to show where this is exactly, but this is going north along Highway 265. We're just copying the same, the same layout. Um, this is this is about the most efficient use of this space here uh, because you're able to get. And these hangers are flexible in how big they can be. Um, obviously, we want to maximize the amount of, of hanger space that we have over there. So if someone comes in and wants a 50 by 50, we don't want them on on this side until maybe the, the furthest north hanger where we start to get squeeze a little bit more. Um, down here, this is. The Powell hanger is actually this hanger that's shown right here. You can see our detention pond. Um, this is this is some of the future development that is probably far furthest away. Um, we're going to have to get rid of the maintenance shed, uh, construct a new taxi lane that way, and then we've got a bunch of space for, for larger hangers here. Uh, and then this is, like I said, the Powell hanger right here, the hanger that, uh, that Steve Patton was talking about today, and then we can kind of work our way that would be west. And so these are, these are some of the ideas um, that, that that we're in our master plan that James and I have kind of been talking about um, throughout, <coughs> this, throughout this process, but um, it doesn't include T hangers. That was something um, that we haven't gotten to yet. This is mainly just box hangers. So T hangers, uh, clear span hangers, we can look into those as well. So what I'll do is I'll take these exhibits that I have here, I'll take something that looks a lot like uh, this that we're talking about today, um, and just start filling it out. And um, I'll try to put a price tag 
on a few of those items. If I put a price tag on anything, it wouldn't be, or on everything, it wouldn't be very useful, but I'll try to find the, the, good, the good value points for you. And if this were mine, I would try very difficult, or very, I would be really sneaky about how I built along the border there on Powell going towards Robinson, because those properties may come for sale cheap. And if we built a bunch of hangars, we don't have taxiway to it, it can make it more difficult. Like right now, you've got a detention pond between it and the only spot, like in your drawing there. So if we had a way to like, I mean, that that church lot right there could come really cheap. Yeah, and those back end of these trees. Yeah, it, we could really add on to our airport that way. So I just just my thought for right, it is that's a, that's a good idea. leave that open as much as we can. We can't, we're, we're landlocked with roads. Well, we're not anything that we could swallow up there because that, that lot may come available for a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, or less, it might be something we could grab. And our dreams of kind of having the, the Emma terminal may have died, but maybe there's a Robinson terminal or something in that direction that would be in the future for us. I've looked at it and I wish I'm this wishful thinking, dreaming, right? Is where that church is all the way down. I mean, that's all that land right there is so underutilized. There's so many blanks in that land. I know there's some homes there, um, but there are so much, there's so much opportunity right there all the way down to 412. Anyways, in your, in your yeah. you know, cutting and pasting, <laughs> playing SimCity with it, uh, leave us some space to get some traffic from airplanes through that. Absolutely. Why don't we approach it? Yeah. That's pretty nice school district. Been doing it for a while. They're about to involved with the choir, all that. Around the spring desk. There's two or one place left. Mm -hmm. So if we can come in there and okay. ask so so why I'm sorry, one last question. I'm, with Micah's thought there, I was thinking the same thing. So if we in that area where he's talking about the church and that, if we were to put tea hangers there, I'm not saying we would, but if we did, is there what are the requirements of width of a, the taxiway to get to there? Would you have to have two plane width or? No, uh, you would only need one plane width. So this this taxi lane that's shown right here, um, how close this hangar is to this taxi lane is about as narrow as we can get. Okay. Um, and I can't I can't remember. I think I'd be able to, to answer that question off the top of my head, but I want to say. Limited to maybe 60 or 70 foot wingspans through there. Um, and it's even more limited coming out of those T hangers and turning 90 right. degrees. So, yeah, because we have grass there, but yeah. maybe he gets to call his own shot. What's up? <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, great. Right. But that's something that the FAA regulates is how, how far, how much space do you need for a plane to be able to taxi through, which tells us exactly where we need to put those hangers. Okay. And that's what, that's what we'll use to lay that out. And who owns the wooded area? I think the church, church owns all the way back to it. Right. Yeah, they do. They're not using it. Could they sell it? You know, like right over there? <laughs> <laughs> Have we got a deal for you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, seriously. We left, a, you, you can barely see it here, but if you look, closely, kind of at the end of that detention pond, you'll see a strip down through there uh, east of those trees, and there's a fence that goes down. I think that's a 50-foot right away, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We left that. We own that. We left that for an access road if we ever needed it. And uh, so when you're looking at this, what I'm saying is we do own that right against the edge of those trees and down to that street. So... What that church property has always been a question about. They, it's never changed since I've been associated with it, as far as I'm concerned. Yep. It's never been improved or anything, has it? Yep. And uh, we bought the, the property adjacent to it, as you well know, that had the shop on it. Is the shop up right here what Laura's talking about? Yes. West, okay. Yeah. Uh, another question I would have if uh, what advantage we'd have if we got rid of the shop and relocated it 
and oh, how much property would that open up? That's what I'm thinking too. Huh? That's what I'm thinking too. Yeah, and so we may want to reload it, relocate the no shop. Any somewhere. money on that? If we're thinking. And yeah, you're right. Hangers on both sides. Right, and, and we are limited a little bit. I guess that gives you. So yeah, how how, how the close to the end of the run, or the, yeah. the runway? And so, just to give you guys some perspective, this entire east side is non-compliant with how close it is to the edge of the runway. Right. The reason we're able to put our new hangar here is because the other ones are there, and we're trying to grandfather it in. Yeah. Um, and so, this side over here, I want to say these four hangers are non-compliant, and I think I think it's either this key hangar right here, maybe this building would be the first building that we would be able to place. Oh. Uh. Can't, we can't go can't go back to the those other ones on the end. And, and that's something that we'll definitely try to hug up against in the spot is, is that line and pull as close as close to it as we can. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what that line of hangers represents. What well, we start building with that shop still there, it's no worse than, and then we tear the shop down. That's not a terrible idea, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Beg for forgiveness or <laughs> what, uh, does does that space to the runway extend all the way to Robinson? Like beyond the runway, or could we expand again wider as we go down closer towards Robinson? Um, so it pinches in, it looks like. So I guess we're on an aerial over here. It stays pretty consistent at the same. It won't get closer to the runway. Uh, it, it gets it gets tricky off the ends of the runway. It gets with, which surfaces govern? Um, that's something that. I can get the answer to. I just can't get it to show it's right. in my head. I'd approach those people at the church and try to buy it. Well, if we're going to do that, then I'll just keep working our way down. Is there, is there room enough there north of the proposed detention pond and west of the existing T hangers or enclosed hangers? That little strip right there, what, what can we do with that piece? Where he's located there. Oh, what we what we could get what? Yeah, that's maybe kind of six airplanes in there. I At least so. four. I know we put together an exhibit for it before. Like I said, that was yeah, proposed at one time to have clear spans. Yeah, I saw that this morning actually. I was found some papers and it had five clear spans and then a parking between twelve and the new one there. And so to me that's so the, like the, the best value. Like I mean I, T hangers are, are more expensive than box hangers. Right. So, but six. if you want T hangers, that's the best spot for it. And how many could you fit there? Five or six, I wanna say. Yeah, there was five on that plan. There Not double sided that parking out. No, just one side. I mean, it looks like you got four on all the other T hangers, so if you extend just a little bit more, you'd probably get the fifth one in there. You got underground power running between those two hangers, so that's that's where the issue is. There's some there's some utilities and then drainage for this road comes through this corner right here. Yeah. So those are the two concerns, but if there's, we, we can look at, you know, mitigating that drainage or this detention lot, pretty much moving the, the issue from maybe here so we can develop it to, to here uh, might be something that we could look at. It's And the detention pond can't go into that space and us straight down, right? It can't be flipped across, go underneath that taxiway? Uh, I'm having a hard time gauging what you're talking about. He's talking about moving the, your pension pond where you're talking about putting the T hangers. Oh. And then you just load go the other way. Then you've got, you well, you got all your power, power there, there for one. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it'd be tough to get uh, yeah. the yeah. engineers to come out on that. If we did it all at the same time, this is all built at the same time, I, we might be able to get it, but they want the detention pond furthest downstream. Just so yeah. Well, why couldn't we take it down there in that non billable area, but closer to the runway? That's what they did up there on the north end. Mm -hmm. Put it. Put it down there. Yeah. Right off the fourth level. Put it. Yeah. Just pop it on down there. Yep. There's the extra drainage box have, huh? There is a big drainage box down there. Right. Just pop it down there and do the tent spot there, and then we'd have that up there for. You have. Three the cost more of the cost of transportation that water is cheaper yeah, than. No, uh, right. Yeah, the cost yeah. of transporting that's cheaper than. Yeah. Because the value of the land is right. so much yeah. more. Yeah, it wouldn't. You, you could do it to ten whistle, couldn't you? 
you wouldn't have anything over the top of it that would hinder you from this using metal pipe rather than concrete. Uh, for, for like suspension bond, is that what you're talking yeah. about? Yeah. Piping the water to it. Would you have to pipe it or could you open ditch it? Uh, from this point to pretty much 412 over there, is that what you're yeah. saying? We could open ditch it. See, that would, that's just an excavation. Down to the, to the pond. Yep. Down to what could be the other. Can that ditch be part of the detention? Yes, yes, the ditch can be, but <laughs> we're just talking. <laughs> this is very poor thinking here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I can see you're hesitant on your answers. <laughs> I've got Adam right here listening in. Go ahead. <laughs> Are you afraid you're not going to get the fall or what? Are you afraid you're not going to get the fall? Yeah, well, that's well, what that, we're trying to. Anyway. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to maximize our yeah. development right. plans. So, if we did that, we'd have a ditch across where we're hoping church property someday goes. But then we'd build a culvert, and it would be covered. Right? That's the thought. Kind of like a taxiway. Like the taxiway. Mm -hmm. We want to connect that property and extend. Let's go buy the church property. <laughs> <laughs> and you never know money. what's going to come available. Future either so. Well, if you approach them, sometimes it's better than get your name on the list if they ever decide to sell. Yeah, get it before you get some other guy wants it. Have, it, have it, we ever done it, that? Have we ever? Have well, we ever contacted took, the church. It or? took us eight years, and we had to condemn it, but we yeah. finally got it. Which one's that? The one there, but the hangers on that the shops on. That the oh. shops on. Yeah. And then we bought that other off of Joe Edwards. Yeah, and it no, was virtually condemned anyway. And but he held our feet to the fire. But I he, his was condemned because of the height. He wouldn't have been cheap, would he? No. Well, you remember that his his, his he didn't have any height. He had yeah. such a height for church building. It wasn't worth anyway anything yeah, anyway. That's right. He we, couldn't we build anything it. on it. Well, we're, um, we're just talking, I know, but I think that's a great idea to get that detention pond out of there. Yeah. and move it down. We need to be working on that now because of the the building, the hangar. Yeah. So, okay. Just build out now. Now you just, just to know about that one. Like if, if we if we want to do like what I would call it as like a regional detention facility is what I call it, but it would it would require study Mom. everything that, that went to it, and, and we have to have this strategic hangar plan so we can make sure it's sized adequately for the future ultimate development as we call it so don't overthink it Greg <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to overthink it I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to back about it. that's right it just has to meet with it just has to meet with maximum run off you, you <laughs> consider all that uh, paving and that's, that's where you get your your estimate or your runoff yep. and then we just have to make sure the, the that's just plan. that's just one click on the computer <laughs> Sorry, appreciate it. Drop. No, I like this. I like to see it like that. Yeah, that's you, good. You made a mistake with all the questions because we we're going to have questions when we see it. But yeah. No, it's, I'm, it, it makes it more interactive. It, makes, it gives us better feedback. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Well, I know one thing that would help, I think, our commission as a whole, when we have some of these overheads, if we could have anything that would have these hangers, have them numbered. Like when we refer to Hangar 11 or, or whatever, that everybody, you know, is familiar Would with. know what they're looking at. Yeah, with, with you know, I, mean, I know where Hangar 5 is because that's where I used to go. But be, be beyond that, yeah, why? But, you know, just as a suggestion, I don't know whether that's feasible or not. Uh, but, absolutely yeah. feasible. I can have that. This, this makes it. With more of Otherwise, you're gonna, I'm just going to guess. Right. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. I already, I already have one. I can. <laughs> okay, I'm not trying to cut anybody off. Anybody else got anything to say? Uh, we've already. Do you have any comments? We'll adjourn, and then we can talk a little more. <laughs> I got another meeting.